Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Miami Township Board of Trustees meeting, second meeting of the month. This is the uh, what is this? The 18th, 18th of April already. Oh goodness. Um, thank you all for joining us. Okay, let's get started. We'll do some business here. I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of April 4th, 2022. I so move. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding these minutes? Nothing jumped out at me. Um, me either. Thank you very much, Mark. Mm -hmm. Hearing no further discussion, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Uh, Ms. Moyer isn't joining us this evening. She's out of town. If anybody was concerned about her whereabouts. I now entertain a motion to remove payment bills at $53,859.98. Broken down general fund, $6,483.94. Fire fund, $40,717.17. Hmm. Cemetery, $1,653.94. EMS billing, $1,386.73. Road and bridge, $3,618.20. And no bond retirement this period. Is there a motion to approve these bills? I so move. There's a motion. Is there a second? I second it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Major. Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Correspondence this period. We have an email from the Census Bureau. We have an email from the ARPA report, which I have to follow up on so we can get that uh, going out. We have the Ohio Township Association Legislative Alert uh, information for, for 4, 8, and 4, 15. We have the Family Violence Prevention Center Spring Fling Invitation. We have MBRPC's Regional Active Transportation Plan, or TAC plan, for the May 2nd uh, meeting. We have a request to use the meeting room uh, for the uh, YSDC. Uh, I'm not sure why they're asking me, probably just to keep the chain of command or something. But uh, I talked to them today about it. Oh, okay. Uh, I, my last conversation was, you know, I just needed the date and time. Uh, request to attend the April 18th meeting from Cincinnati resident uh, regarding Kingwood Solar, Great Miami Ridge, uh, Riverway Springtime Activities, Green County Public Health meeting uh, announcement for the 7th. Ooh, that's a long time. OTA Grassroots Clippings, USDA's rem reminder of May May's payment, um, which I hope we made. Well, we will in May. May 1st, oh, May, it, May 1st payment, will utterly automatically be taken out of our yeah. account. Uh, email from Steve Weary, who we need to discuss that later on. Uh, 2021 raise grant application, Green County com uh, Competitive Collective Paving Bid from the engineer. We'll probably review that. Uh, 2021 Premier Health Trauma Annual Report. We won't review that. And fund status, revenue status for April 18th. Any further correspondence this evening? Hearing none, we'll move along. We're going to move to the fire department to report next. Uh, as you can see, our fire chief is not here, but he did send a uh, uh, he did send a report in. <coughs> he says, "I spent the weekend in Nashville visiting my brother and niece, and won't be back in town until this evening. My absence here is the report. There were 33 EMS incidences, six in Bath Township. That might be a high for a while. Mm -hmm. Ten fire incidents, four in Bath Township, and that also might." Be uh, incidents of note, he says E82, M82, and C80 responded to a rollover tractor trailer crash on State Route 235, just past Byron Road. Truck went off the road, uh, rolled over, crashing the cab, crushing the cab, and sadly killing the driver. Fairborn Fire responded as well uh, due to jurisdictional questions, and the incident occurred just inside Fairborn city limits, so the Fairborn did handle the incidents paperwork. Tanker 82 and M82 responded to mutual aid to Zenia Township for a structure fire on North 68 North near Clifton Road, which sadly was a total loss. Uh, crews assisted with extinguishing the fire. Uh, Engine 82 responded to mutual aid to Cedarville Township for a structure fire at Dale's Auto Parts on US 42. That's going to be quite a ways out. Crews assisted um, 
successfully extinguishing the fire. During the incident, NJ2 ran over some shrapnel at the fire location. Uh, I wonder who's driving that. That'd be me, sir. Hmm. Okay. Those tires are pricey. They're also 15 years old. <laughs> They're just going to be pricey. Um, Dale's is a scrapyard, damaging the curb side rear, rear tires. That's being addressed today. <coughs> Maintenance updates, he says. Following the new tires, Medicaid 2, we have more tires. Medicaid 2 went to Fishers and Senior for an alignment as well as replacement of ball joints. It, ball joints, it's a never ending battle, he says. Of course. <coughs> Treadmill had its drive belt replaced by GG Fitness, which worked briefly and then shuts itself off at random infills, which is a real problem. This is due to a circuit board issue, and a circuit board is no longer made for the model. I have a replacement quotes this afternoon or tomorrow. Everyone hopefully will take note that the lobby upgrade has been completed with the wall panels installed two weeks ago and historical photos now up on the other wall. And I think everything looks very nice. I hope we all agree. Margaret, you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, even, I even read the, uh, the statements. Excellent. Good mission. Mm -hmm. Yes, nice. Events. He notes we will be participating in Saturday's bike trail day with. Yellow Springs uh, Police Department and others at the train station, and in Sunday's wildflower extravag extravaganza here at the fire station. The Firefighters Association will be again selling hot dogs during the event. He then mentions the Governor's Volunteer Fire Service Task Force. And Thursday, Governor DeWine held a press conference at the Central Ohio Fire Museum to announce the formation of a task force on volunteer fire service issues. This task force, the brainchild of State Fire Marshal Kevin Reardon, is the first statewide effort to address and identify the crisis facing volunteer and volunteer combination fire and EMS agencies in Ohio. Uh, it is estimated that at least 60% of Ohioans are protected by volunteer or part volunteer agencies, and the vast majority of these are struggling with multiple issues from recruitment to funding. Division of EMS, part of the Department of Public Safety, reports a 20% decline in the number of volunteer firefighters statewide over the past three years. I'm surprised it's that low. Uh, so the problem is very re real, as we know, he mentions. <clears throat> the task force consists of 29 members from many groups, including three from the OFCA. Uh, Chief Kyle Miller from Cedarville is among them. I am happy to discuss this effort, effort at our next meeting or individually as desired. Uh, last but not least, he says the duty crew will be here this evening to join us. So that's the fire report. Uh, any other fire discussion? Uh, no, not other than I'm eager to hear. Our... <laughs> okay, what do you what do you propose? If, if I right may, ahead. If I may, real quick. Uh, yes. The tires were fixed today on engine eighty two. Uh, it ended up being a uh, faulty valve stem. Uh, apparently the valve stem extensions attached to a braided line that brings it around for us to access. It's kind of the weak point of the whole tire. Mm -hmm. uh, but due to the age, the outside two were replaced today. Um, it's going to go for getting, we're currently getting a quote to replace the remaining four. So no shrapnel? No shrapnel. No, it was just a bad, bad valve stem. Mm -hmm. But it completely flattened the inside uh, inside officer side dual tire. Well, in that case, we will amend the official minutes to remove the shrapnel reference. Thank you. <laughs> and, and clear anybody's name who might have been involved in propelling that vehicle at night. Now, did you want to move people around or not? Uh, that's not bother. Oh. It's no bother. I think they are capable. But. Thank you, gentlemen, for uh, coming this evening. Appreciate it. If we don't mind, we'll go left to right. That would be our left. Your okay. right. Okay. We're going right, right to left. Uh, <laughs> and if, if you wouldn't mind, we'll just have a quick, brief introduction and a little something, perhaps, about yourself and maybe what made you join the department um, way back when. Okay. I'm Cassidy. Hi, Cassidy. Um, I've worked here for three years. I also worked at Harrison Township and Springfield Township. Uh, got me in the fire service is my younger brother, who also works here. Mm -hmm. uh, my free time, I work in one of my jobs. What <laughs> <Or> free time? <laughs> yeah. I'm um, 24. So, 
See where, see where I end up. <laughs> nice. Well, we are awfully happy to have you here, Cassie. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, so my name is Justin Turner. Uh, I've been here for close to three years, uh, just a little shy of him. Um, what got me started in the fire service? Well, I had the fire. I joined the fire service in California when I lived there, but uh, but uh, I grew up in Clifton. Well, I grew up going to Camp Clifton actually uh, most of my childhood. So uh, I've always been around the area, and uh, I really enjoyed both the Clifton and the Yellow Springs communities. And so I wanted to further my EMS and fire career uh, with this department. So I, unlike him, I don't have a whole lot of other jobs. I just volunteer for another department uh, as, as needed. Otherwise, I'm here or I'm in Clifton remodeling my house. Um, and uh, I've done a lot of other things for another meeting, perhaps. But uh, I'm really happy to be here, and I like to be part of this community and help out. So. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Uh, I'm uh, Captain Nathaniel Ayers. Uh, I've been here for 14 years now. Uh, I started here in 2008 when I was 18. Uh, at that time, the current captain, Amy Maychak, got me in here. Um, wasn't really sure what I was going to do with my life. I was either that or just you know, do maintenance forever over at Friends. Uh, so it was kind of a fluke. I was like, all right, well, I'll give it a shot, see how it turns out. And then 14 years later, I'm sitting here in a captain's position as a career firefighter. So this is it, this is all I do. Uh, if I'm not here, I'm at home, hanging out with my kid. That's pretty much it. Retrain my dogs. It's a boring life. This is not all I know, sorry, so he lead us. And that is true, he does lead us. <laughs> Very good <laughs> lead. Absolutely. I appreciate it, yeah. Well, there's going to be an opening uh, uh, here, I think, in the somewhat near future. <clears throat> Check. Yeah, any interest? Don, yeah. have any, uh, has, has the fire department ever had a, a dog? Uh, not <laughs> to my knowledge. No, okay. it's probably best we don't have a dog. It's not not considered professional anymore. No, it's just it is. It's just we wouldn't get much done. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I think most of us are we're really big dog people. <laughs> so we would end up hanging out with the dog more than anything. <laughs> I have a couple of feral cats in my neighborhood. I might just <laughs> drop one off. I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Hollister. Do you have any questions? No. Sure. <laughs> you, you look like an inversion of a question. Justin, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Absolutely. What do you want to do with the rest of your life? That's a very good question. So uh, before I became a firefighter, and uh, now paramedic, I just finished paramedic school three months ago. Um, I spent 10 years as a monk in uh, India and Tibet and five years in a monastery. Uh, so that side of things uh, has led me sort of here in, in a way. And uh, I, to be honest with you, having invested all the time I have post living in a monastery into the fire service and EMS service, I am uh, going to continue with this. Uh, I, I like it. It's uh, my mom and my grandmother and my grandparents, they were, they were all in the either uh, nurses or dental assistants or worked at hospitals. So I grew up around that stuff and, and uh, I really enjoy helping people. And so I think that goes probably with my background having lived in a monastery for so long. Do you have aspirations for a, a big city department, a New York City type thing where it's just 24 seven, go, go, go? Well, uh, I'm 43. Not that I'm old by any means, but in the fire service, that is not a spring chicken, I guess is what they say. Uh, and I really, no, to answer your question simply and directly, I don't. I like our pace, and, and I, I think that I can make a very good impact here uh, with my with living so close and with my interest in fire and EMS. I want to devote that time to this department. Mm -hmm. um, I like everyone I work with, uh, board members included, even though I haven't met all of you personally, but uh, I love our staff and I, I like the community. We go on some funny runs sometimes, but uh, I never really get really bothered by that. It's just part of the, our, what we do. So, uh, no, I'm not going to go anywhere else. You have a spouse, children, mothers, fathers, grandparents, aunts, uh, uncles, brothers? No children. I have a very serious girlfriend soon, possibly. T t uh, well, <laughs> there's going to be a marriage uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. On the record. Oh, on the record. Does she, does she know about that? 
she knows somewhat of us. Uh, okay, well, if she doesn't, she knows now, because this is all in camera yeah. being broadcast <laughs> nationwide. <laughs> yeah. she, uh, uh, there, there, are a few, uh, there are a few prior st uh, steps I need to take beforehand. Yeah, I would think so. so At least one. Right? Yeah. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, but uh, no, no kids. Uh, my mom lives in Centerville. Uh, my, I have a sister, and I have a couple of adopted sisters. So, uh, dog but, cat. Uh, I have a dog. Well, I have a dog. I have a blue healer. Uh huh. Um, and I love my, blue my, uh, you, I love them. They're yeah. crazy and yeah. stubborn, and that's why I love them. They're great. And then my uh, girlfriend, she has. Well, two cats, but we adopted two uh, rescues, so four total now. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you have an instant family then, when you? Have exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, that's probably about it, so, as far as the family is concerned. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Cassie, how's your love life? Nope. <laughs> I worked in much. <laughs> that's probably true. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I'm just going along myself for now. Yeah. Still live at home with my mom, sister, and brother. The days I am home. <laughs> so. That's few. Uh, Nate, what are you doing with your spare time? I know you said not much, but uh, let's dig a little deeper into this. Uh, so in my spare time, uh, I'm currently enrolled to get my bachelor's in fire administration. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of turn the point into the future here. Mm -hmm. If he was here, I'd make a few jokes about taking a spot. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm also in... Uh, live fire instructor course uh, that's finishing up here next week, so I'll be done with that. So pretty much, I'm just kind of like a full-time student in my spare time. Are you involved at all with the uh, reformation of the Clifton Fire Department into the Clifton Training Extravaganza? Uh, more on the prop end of things, uh, like the training props, but that's really about it. I haven't helped at all with the with the demoing of it or the remodeling. Uh, any plans to get rid of uh, which of the West's roof structure out back? Yes, that's actually hoping hoping to take that up to Station 82, you're saying? Okay, well, hope springs eternal, but uh, it's, it's best to have a truck and a trailer. That's what we have to end for. Well, <laughs> we're going to have to start paying taxes on that as an ex auxiliary structure if it doesn't go somewhere. I'll get rid of it one of these days. Well, gentlemen, I appreciate you coming to see us. Um, it's, uh, it, it wouldn't be possible without you. I mean, I mean that sincerely. Even Margaret thinks so, too. I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. And I have a special little treat for everybody. That's it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. Here's something to spend on. Yourself and your free time. There's two percent things to spend on yourself in your free time. Thank Get you. Get some free time. Yes. yes. <laughs> you too. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Eight. There is two. I thought there was maybe four people. Uh, we had a little snafu. We had a schedule mishap, and we had one of our guys had to leave to go get his kid. Mark was coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what I thought. You should. He's back here on shift at seven. Oh. No. Mm -hmm. well, he maybe he may we'll see him there. If he's in, we'll maybe we'll see the next I'll time. I'll send him over. Yeah. We're not going. Thank you all, <laughs> gentlemen. You, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank Take you. care, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. See, that didn't hurt at all. Oh, that's nice. Okay, now we'll come to the uh, uh, public comment on agenda items. Mr. Deal, I believe this is your opportunity. Thank you very much. I appreciate Please. it. I will be brief. And uh, I appreciate your allowing me to come here, even though I don't live in the township or even the county. <laughs> I grew up in Yellow Springs, and I work out of Clifton at the Clifton Gorge State Nature Preserve, but I live in Cincinnati. My mother lives in a nursing home in Zine. So I come up here at least four days a week and, and, uh, and participate in things in, in, in the county and in, and in the uh, township. Uh, just Briefly, uh, I am here to, uh, to encourage you to reconsider your opposition to the Kingwood Solar Project. Mm -hmm. The reason I do that, and first of all, let me say, I represent no one but myself. I, I have been in touch with the company Vesper several times. 
but only to give them some information. And I, as I say, I'm not being paid by anyone. I don't represent anybody. And uh, I just have a personal interest that goes back about 30 years in the science and the, and the politics of climate change. And also, I have just a strong interest in protecting uh, farmland. My family's, my, my father's family, my mother's family, farmed in either Greene County or Greene Township in what is now Clark County mm -hmm. from 1810 to, 17, uh, to 1982. And I've been around farms, I love farms, I know they need to be protected. However, I, I think that uh, we also, as, as a nation, uh, both at the federal and state and local levels, have to do what we can to provide whatever we can to minimize the, the future impacts of climate change. And the, uh, probably the most important thing that we can do is to reduce the production of electricity and the use of uh, fossil fuels in transportation uh, and thereby uh, through, through with fossil fuels and therefore reduce the emission of carbon dioxide and other so-called greenhouse gases. And this, the climate scientists of the world are clamoring for action. Uh, they're saying that we are in a uh, almost existential <coughs> crisis and that we all need to take whatever steps we can immediately. And I think that, that that thinking must apply even to local projects such as this. I've been searching for a metaphor, and I haven't come up with a really good one, but the one I have come up with is, let's imagine that there is a stretch of, of coastland that has sand dunes and other important assets, and it needs to be protected. And there's even a local plan to preserve it. Then scientists, uh, say that a tsunami is coming. It's going to hit the entire coast. Mm -hmm. In a situation like that, I think that the community must step back a bit from its plan to protect that little area of land and to say, we need to participate in the overall uh, effort to protect everything else from the tsunami and, and put up our stretch of a, of a wall in such a way that when we take it down, the, the coastal land will not be uh, damaged and we can then go about protecting it like we want to. Mm -hmm. And so in this case, I think that it's necessary for everyone involved to try to find a way to uh, get this project uh, done, which will provide 170 megawatts of greenhouse-free uh, electricity for like 35 years, and do so in such a way that the soil will be protected or even enhanced so that when the project ends and is properly decommissioned, it can return to being productive farmland. I think that if people put their heads together, a solution can be found. But I'm concerned that people have staked out their positions already and it's either I'm against it or I'm for it. And Yep. I, I, I think that everyone has to come together and try to find a solution that meets both the needs to protect that particular land and to provide that particular electricity. This is not the best place to site a solar farm. The best place would be, for instance, in places that is not farmland, or even as, as uh, Don Hollister suggested, on a brownfield land or something. But the reality is, this is the only option that is presented for southwestern Ohio right here and now. And we, act, we need to act here and now. As Don has suggested, it would be best if there was a statewide planning process that could identify the best suitable places for wind and solar. But frankly, I don't think that's ever going to happen. Or if it does, it will be at least a decade away. And in the meantime, we have an opportunity for, for this project to go forward. And I do think that through the proper planting and other ways that should be dead, uh, that should be placed in writing in ways that are, that are uh, coupled with penalties 
if if these measures are not met, I think that I think that there are ways to achieve both ends. So that's that's why I'm here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> well, you're very welcome, and, and certainly glad that you came. And your um, lack of a better word argument uh, is is very strongly met in in the area. There's no question about it. Before I turn this over to Don, because Don basically, uh, for lack of a better word, is our representative to the to the project uh, as it's gone along, and I'm going to let him uh, address your uh, address your statement. But one thing is, and I, I, you have to know this, but the Ohio Power Siding Board is virtually at the end of their road in deciding what to do about this project. What little, and I mean little, influence townships had was, has been, is passed. So, I, I know what you're saying, but, and we're happy to listen, right? But there's, there was so little that we could have done, and that's already been done. So, Don, would you like to, well, to Mr. Uh, Drew and I talked at length, was it Monday or last, last week? Friday. Friday. Uh, and <coughs> the, what you said tonight, uh, you may have mentioned the same thing last week, but um, that it may take 10 years to get my dream for statewide planning and that we got to do something now. Uh, I, I can't argue with that. Uh, our, and, you know, I took an oath to obey the Constitution and uh, but also, at least implicitly, to follow our own rules. That is, our zoning is in direct opposition to the power siding board. Uh, now, they overrule us, uh, or, or may. Uh, I guess what I would take away from this is that we should look for ways to do some other things ourselves we can get please maybe solar panels on our roof here which I haven't thought of until um, you're looking at me <laughs> we we requested the architect to, to to explore that possibility and they said that based on the amount of square feet that we have mm -hmm. the direction that the roof is the prevailing cost at this, at this point and the amount of sun that is generated in this area, it, it would not really be economically feasible for us mm -hmm. to power our own, you know, and, and pay for it in a limited lifetime. So it was, it was requested. Mm -hmm. uh, two of the things that you said, uh, that there be rules for uh, enforcing the planting that that they speak of, and then you, you didn't say it this time, but I think you agreed with me in our earlier conversation uh, that in the decommissioning Absolutely. there be uh, clarity about enforcing. I'd say there'd be not only clarity, but that for everything, mm -hmm. for everything that is required to make sure that this would be done properly, that it be done, that it be placed in writing, and, and preferably with penalties if the company does not meet their obligations. And I fully understand, I agree with what you discussed with me before about the need to have a guaranteed uh, funding for decommissioning because we don't know what's going to happen with this company or other things. And so, I mean, I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for, for uh, clarity and uh, and uh, responsibility on by the company in a in a way that uh, meets 
all of the needs that the community has to make sure this is done right. Yeah. Well, here... And I don't, and I don't speak for the company. Simple. I cannot guarantee that. I'm just saying make your lawyer, right. lawyers go to work and get it. <laughs> well, the Power Siding Board similarly does not have teeth at that kind of detail. Uh, is my impression. Um, there will be two more days of hearing, uh, the 27th and 28th, I believe it is, of April. Uh, may, may not use both days, but, uh, and the Power Siding Board continues to take written statements from anyone listening. Uh, Go to the OPSB website, Ohio Power Siding Board, uh, and it's a fairly user-friendly uh, website. So it, it'll send you to uh, where to leave statements. Uh, if you, Don, if you would like, um, I could give you the case number because on the website you have to. Okay. Well, they'll 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 also take the uh, keyword Kingwood. Oh, okay. But why don't you read the case number right. right now for? When you go to the website for the Ohio Power Siding Board, and it gives you uh, a space to type in the case number for the project you're interested in. This is Kingwood Solar, and it is twenty one dash zero one one seven dash E L dash B G N and uh, there is a, a specific place for public comments which is opposed to the actual you know filings by the parties to the case but the public comments is where you can you can enter in and if you want if you have something extended uh, you can uh, email it to the uh, to the basically the clerk's office of the Public Utility Commission with an, with a word attachment or whatever you want, and they will enter it into the public comments record the same day. Now that doesn't guarantee that the members of the board will actually read it, but it would be on the record. Well, we we still have zoning saying it should be agricultural, yeah. and uh, what, I, what I get from your argument is that I should be uh, pushing faster, for, or pushing for uh, faster change at the state level in the state planning, so it doesn't take 10 years to get a, a change. Uh, but I, this is not where I think we should have um, a solar array. I understand. Um, there are, and you may know better, there are 30-some pending plans. Two of, two of them, the staff have initially said, at least initially, uh, that they don't think that they should be pursued. Um, and this is one of them. But, the power siding board has to make its own decision, and they're still gathering information, but there are at least 30 coming statewide. Uh, one is in operation, uh, and another almost finished. Do uh, is this the end of our discussion? I mean, I know we're supposed to spend very a few, just a few we're, minutes. We're getting close to the end. Okay. We're getting close to the end. Well, let me just make two comments. Uh, first of all, the idea of solar panels on rooftops is a good one, but it is a thimble uh, compared to the swimming pool of energy that would be supplied by this project. This is 170 megawatts, which is approximately a third of a normal sized coal plant. And this would be shipped to the, to the eastern uh, uh, utility grid 
uh, and would be used prim primarily, as I understand it, to meet the requirements that utilities have in the eastern states that certain amount of electric electricity be generated with solar or wind. Now, Ohio has no such requirement because of the politics of energy in the state of Ohio. But, so I think that we're, we're talking apples and oranges here, and we need, when you think of what is necessary for thousands of individuals to put their small solar panels on their roofs compared to one project right here that is that is under you know great scrutiny and the funding is available and it's all in one site and it's going to be managed properly we would hope i think that we're looking at different things entirely uh, the other thing is that is that as don knows there is a a law that was passed by the state legislature last year and signed into law by the governor which essentially provides that solar and wind projects can be blocked by county commissioners if they have previously designated certain land for protection against this sort of thing. And I think that the reality is that in most counties that the county commissioners will act to block solar and wind projects if there's a substantial amount of local opposition for political reasons. And so even though there are many projects that are proposed, I do not, see, I do not think that it is realistic to think that the board will even have jurisdiction over many of them because of what I just said. So. Again, I know that this is not a, a best case scenario. I'm just saying that the urgency of the need for large scale solar projects uh, it is so important that we need to find a way to do it in a way that will not damage this farmland. And I understand that plans are important. But in this case, I personally do not know what actual physical damage would be done by this project on the land that would be used, even though it is zoned as farmland. If we are at war and we need a new Coast Guard station, or if we need something else to go on to meet a, a national or international crisis, I think that the fact that we have a plan for normal times should not be a reason to cite something which is in response to an emergency. And that's how I view this. So thank, thank you very much. I appreciate your letting me address you tonight. Thank you, Jeff. Are you? I'll, I'll stay in touch. Okay. Thank you. you good with where we are? Yep. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Okay. You're welcome to, to listen to yes. more of our. I think I will. I'm interested in local government. You, you people actually do something, as opposed to other people sitting around and talking about what other people yes. should do. We have cemeteries. <laughs> we have rural roads. Yes. And rural zoning. I took care of a cemetery and, and a quiet. church, so I, I'm interested in this. <laughs> Professor Ackley. Well, thank you for uh, putting me on the agenda. I've got three copies here, so I'll leave one for Margaret. Or not Margaret, Marilyn. Um, this is fancy. As usual, um, I took your renewal and I put it out for bid with the other companies once we got everybody filled out in form fire. Just just to remind, I think every, you guys have been through it so much, and I think Dan, you're on the thing. Yeah, so I think Mar Mar Margaret's on that, but just to remind everybody, we, we have kind of a hybrid plan. We have we have a high deductible insurance plan that we buy from the insurance company to cover our catastrophic losses, and then we self-insure the deductible portion for the employees so that they don't have to come up with that high deductible, and the township shares that, that deductible cost with them. So we're going to go through both parts of that again real quickly here. The uh, second page in on your uh, 
handout there it shows you just a snapshot of, of where we're at on the Anthem high deductible plan. And it'll show you your current plan at the top and then right below that is the renewal plan. And if you look at it just real quickly going across there, you'll see the plans are identical to last year. So nothing's changed and other than in the prescription area. And a lot of times the insurance companies will tweak those plans and they'll go from a $3,500 deductible to a $3,700 deductible or they'll go from a $30 copay to a $35 copay, whatever. but they haven't done that this year. Everything's pretty much stayed the same. Other than the prescriptions, um, they've tweaked those numbers a little bit. Uh, again, there's, there's Anthem is staying with its level one and level two prescription plans. And just as a reminder what that is, that's the, the preferred prescription companies or preferred pharmacies and the non-preferred pharmacies. And I'll tell you real, real quickly that the, the non-preferred pharmacies are Walgreens and Rite Aid. They don't, they don't want to play with Anthem. They want to sign a contract really? with them. So they put them into the level two uh, second tier uh, pharmacies and pretty much everybody else, Kroger, CVS, Walmart, Target, everybody else is up in the, the level one. Um, pharmacy. So if the employees can go any place they want to go, but if they use the level one pharmacies, it's a little bit less expensive for them to get their prescriptions filled than it is if they use a level two pharmacy. So that's the difference on that. Um, bottom line, rate-wise, uh, last year, if you remember, we had about a 3% increase in premiums. Medical inflation ended up last year being at about 7%. Mm -hmm. So you know, we didn't even quite stay level with inflation rates last year at the increase that we had. This year they're taking a 9% increase and projections are to, to be about 6.5% medical inflation rate this year. So we're just trending pretty much with what medical inflation rates are going to have. Um, it's kind of a sad commentary on our, our healthcare system that the, the rates have gotten this far out of line, but that's that's where they're at. And you'll see on the next couple pages um, where we've compared that to, to shopping. Mm -hmm. um, the third page, the next page after that, kind of gives you a quick summary of who's on the plan. And Anthem does their rates not based upon uh, age and gender. They do a, a single family, two party, and an employee spouse uh, so rate. So that's what you're going to see. It doesn't matter if your employee is 20 years old or 50 years old. They're, their single employees from the same rate. Um, that, that total number on there, this, if you see up at the top of that page that you're looking at, it says this data is current as of 1227. That was when they started processing all these renewals, it was right at the end of December. And since that time, you've taken on a new employee, mm -hmm. Mr. Klein, so he's not on there. So I have added his rate onto the total cost on the next page where I put together a spreadsheet if you flip over to the next page after that, you'll see there's a, a spreadsheet comparing various insurance company quotes that I've run. And the total underneath that first column with Anthem is $9,000. So that does reflect Mr. Klein in that number. You know, Steve, uh, I, I, I look at the page with the, with the uh, people who are on the plan, and it just makes me remind me that when Margaret and I started, other than her and I, there were Two yeah. people yeah. total on mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, the rates are probably oh don't even, don't even get there, there. Yeah. yes sir mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, but on that next page anyway the spreadsheet there we, we put it out with all the big the bigger carriers in the area uh, medical mutual United Healthcare Aetna mm -hmm. all quoted on it we went with a couple um, one, one smaller carrier Mid America and then one mid sized carrier Allstate. And uh, so those, those are the rates that are showing there. You, and just, it's not hard to see if you go down to the bottom that, that Anthem's still pretty competitive compared to what everybody else is for them. So my recommendation is that we stay with Anthem for another year. Um, if the rates continue to go up, we may want to look at going to a higher deductible with Anthem and self-insuring even more, a, a greater portion of that because your claim results have been really good on the self-funded self part of it. So I don't think Do you have that in here. Is that in here? No, yeah, no. The, claim, the claims part. Of it okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. I didn't show you any higher 
higher deductible numbers yeah. this year. Uh, that's a mm -hmm. so. um, and then if you go over to that next section after the grade divider, uh, that gets into the, the self-insuring part of it. And the company that we use to self-fund all that, to administer all that, is Plain Links down in Cincinnati. And uh, this is actually just a copy of the brochure that they put out that we can hand out to all the employees, which, Margaret, you may want to put that in the back of your mind that if, for new employees coming in, this is a nice brochure to hand out to them to try to explain or let them understand how Plain Links works. Mm -hmm. what they do. The, the, the uh, back half of that brochure gives a summary of all the benefits and what you know what their actual cost is like a 250 deductible rather than 3500 deductible and so on. So that's all I mean. We can make those available if you don't have them. I, I don't like it because I'm like, Clear myself on plain links. I know I pay them, but I. Okay. Yeah, I can I can get those too. Um, and then if you uh, go back to to the uh, I guess it'd be about the third page after that that grade divider uh, is the special prescription plan that we have for the Medicare carve out people. So for the I think it's primarily the trustees that are on the over age 65 uh, plan. If you guys get to choose whatever prescription company you want every year during open enrollment season. But of the, most, the majority of the prescription plans have a pretty good deductible on them, $400, $500, whatever. So the township said, we want to make the prescription benefits comparable for the trustees as they are for the active employees. So the, the township self-funds a portion of that prescription coverage for you. So, um, that's what that, that third page shows you is your, your co pays for your prescriptions, and that basically offsets your deductibles that you have through whatever uh, RP prescription that you choose. And then the following page is the one that Chris was asking about as far as the claims that were paid. This, when I when I asked them to run a claims report, I have to give them a, you know, a time period to run the claims, and so I ran these from August 30th of, of 21 to August. Uh, I'm sorry, ran us for a 12 month period. I don't think they have the date on there, but yeah, they, they didn't put the date on there. I, I ran it from uh, April, April 30th, I think it was, of last year, April 30th of this year. I believe it's the way we ran that, or April 1st, maybe it was. But anyway, that shows you what you you had about $7,900 worth of claims that got turned into claim links. And then of that $7,900, the township paid. $558 in that. So that'll, that helped to self-fund that, that $3,500 deductible that, that the employees incurred so it offset that deductible for them. Isn't the $7,900 substantially higher than it had been in the past? Um, no, we've yeah. had we've had some times when it's been up around $12,000. Hmm. Last year it was, a, it was comparable to that. The year before that, two years ago, it was up around twelve five. Hmm. Again, I might have been thinking of some old, old yeah. data, yeah. <laughs> as it were, old data. And you know, and a lot of that is not payable because it's, it's going to be co-pays. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you go to an office visit and somebody gets charged maybe a, a, a hundred dollars, and, and it ends up being a thirty-dollar copay, then you guys will have to pay the seventy dollars. So that's why, out of the seventy-nine hundred that gets turned in, like. 558 of it actually had to end up getting paid. Mm -hmm. Plus a part of that is paid out shared on an 80-20 basis. Mm -hmm. Once that 250 deductible is met, the employee pays 20% of the township pays the other 80%. Yeah. So. Are we still in uh, happy with claim lengths? Have we ever been happy with claim lengths? Well, yeah, that's a good question. There's not very many companies, we don't have a lot of choices. Right. <laughs> yeah. there, there's not very many companies that do this on a small group basis like mm -hmm. this. Now, actually, I'm, one of the quotes that I gave you that Mid-America Associates, they are one of the largest third-party administrators in the United States, and they actually have a fully funded insurance plan that they put together through their administrator it's out of Chicago. Um, and that was who I had asked to quote on it, and they declined to quote on it. But mm -hmm. uh, there's not very many companies that will quote eight or 10 employees and do the type of planning that we're doing here where they're partially self-funding that, because there's not much money in there. They get paid you know, per claims that they process and things like that. And there's just not a lot of that here. So, so to answer your question, yeah, claim lengths is still 
about the best we can get for right, for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the last page in there is just a quick summary of your your dental plan that you're offering to uh, to everyone, and nothing has changed on that. Medical Mutual of Ohio, which is out of uh, the Cleveland area, they bought Superior Dental last year. But nothing changed. They're allowing Superior Dental to continue to operate under their own name and entity and so on. And they chose not to increase any rates or change any benefits. So, literally, the dental plan stays identical to what it was last year, cost wise and structure wise. Uh, any questions, Don? Nope. Well, in that case, I'd entertain a motion to uh, renew the contract with. Actually, insurance for the for the anthem coverage that we now currently have, and then would continue to have. Right. I so move. Okay. Right, motion. I uh, will second it. And for the discussion regarding that, here I may vote, please. Mr. Mutcher. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Well, Stephen, thank you again for your work. We appreciate it. Thank you. Tom. Um, hope we haven't been too much of a pain to you. Actually, actually, I enjoyed meeting some of the firefighters tonight because I see their names all the time on the foreign fire stuff. But I never yeah. have a clue who anybody is. Yeah. So, yeah. We have another. Yeah, no, we do. Well, thanks for coming down. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll stay and meet this gentleman. So. Okay. Well, that means it's your turn, Mark. That would be the worst decision you've made. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you could just give us a, a you know, a, a brief introduction of yourself and. Uh, and a, a little bio, and that's all. Okay, cool. I was just told to throw on my uniform and come in here, so I didn't really know <laughs> what I was coming into. Uh, my name is Mark Murphy. Uh, I've been a firefighter for the last 18 years in Greene County. Uh, started off in Zena Township as an explorer back in 99. Uh, graduated from Beaver Creek in 03, went straight to the fire academy, and uh, busted my ass ever since then. I did uh, four years with Zena Township, uh, transferred over here in November of 2008. Um, I've been part-time since, uh, I believe, sometime in 2009, uh, minus my military time. Uh, I've been here and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon, so you guys got to deal with me as the black sheep of the family for a while, so. <laughs> so I take it then you enjoy your work in the, in the township department? Uh, my back doesn't, but the rest of me does, yes sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this was... Uh, uh, between here and the military, uh, I grew up a lot. Um, and my township uh, helped open my eyes to uh, different people's views and opinions on everything. Um, they were very accepting of me uh, through uh, some trouble times that I had when I first got out here. Um, but uh, they've been very welcoming and I've enjoyed working out here and everybody, as far as I know, has enjoyed working with me. And, uh, there's, I, 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 come to the decision with my wife that this is probably going to be, when I pull the pin, this is where it's going to be at. So, no. well, I, so. Uh, I have no plans on going anywhere anytime soon, like I said. So. Well, what we're doing here is we're just kind of asking people to come in, um, sometimes just put a face to a name on newer people or just to get a little more, you know, just a little more personal information about them, uh, give you a chance to just see a little bit of what we're doing. Right. Um, we. Obviously, we've already just because you ha hadn't come to uh, come to shift yet, we've already gone through our fire report. So you know all of those things that you probably already know what was in the report, but we have that. As long as my name doesn't pop up, I'll go with whatever you guys decide. So <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, uh, Don. Have any questions for Mark? Uh, <clears throat> you said you started with Xenia Township yes, as sir. an explorer. Yes, sir. Actually, I started uh, in Beaver Creek in uh, '98. Uh, Found out that Zenith Township had a more active post. Uh, so my freshman year of high school, I transferred out here. Uh, as soon as I graduated, they offered me a, a, a volunteer spot as soon as I got done with the academy. Uh, spent the first summer uh, out of high school going through the academy so I could get started on everything. Uh, never really made the move, unfortunately, to make this a full-time spot for me. Um, but at the same time, uh, working other jobs and then eventually uh, going into the military kind of made this a hobby that I get paid for, but it's also something that, you know, I, I don't like to my own home too often, but it's something that I'm good at that, you know, I, I don't dread coming to work uh, every time, uh, you know, alarm goes off and, all right, it's time to get up and you put some clothes on and get active today. So uh, it's, it's 
it's been a it's been a hell of a ride so far, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Do you have any sense of how active the Beaver Creek and Xenia Township Explorer posts are now? Um, Beaver Creek, I'm not so sure. Um, I know that uh, once I actually got on out and out of the Explorer post at uh, Xenia Township, uh, we had upwards of about 50 to 20 uh, active participants in the program. Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you what the program's like now because uh, it has been 15 years since I've been over there. Um, I do know that when I left there, it was still a very active post. Um, but with the, not so much current climate, but the, the current generation that's coming up of the gimme, gimme, gimme type attitude, I, I, I see a lot of these programs unfortunately slowly starting to decline. Um, I know Beaver Creek is having problems trying to find full-time paramedics to come work for them to the point where uh, it's been quite a few years that I've seen them actually actively hunt EMT basics to come work full-time for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now, currently, they do have uh, uh, notices out looking for uh, level two uh, EMT basics to come work full-time for them. Um, I, I really wish that that mindset would turn back to the, you know, work hard to get what you what you get. Um, all I can do is hope and pray that it does. But um, yeah, they were they were very active uh, when I left. Um, but like I said, I uh, com compared to us, I'm not so sure. I know in the last two years we haven't really been too active with explorers just because of all the code stuff that's been going on. Um, I mean, even training is just now starting to kick back up again that I'm seeing and. I, I like where that's heading, so uh, hopefully we're, we're getting back to some sort of normalcy again. So. Do, we have, do we have two explorers now in Yellow Springs? I also couldn't tell you. No, I, could I, I know that most of our explorers, uh, once they turn 18 and they go through an academy or an EMT basic course, we usually end up taking them as uh, volunteers. So mm -hmm. uh, I know that, uh, let's see here, Peyton was one. Gavin was one. Um, the Brewers were both ones. Um, Nick, no Jackson. Uh, Nick was one. Yep. Um, so I mean, it, it's it's definitely a a good uh, futuristic payout for us that we end up getting a new member for the department. So uh, if it came down to, hey, do you want to keep this or not? I would absolutely vote yes, keep it. Um, it's just a matter of getting people active and uh, participating in it again. I'm impressed, and I didn't realize it was a, a thing with other fire departments also. Oh, a lot. And, and I didn't realize until after I'd gotten out of high school that uh, Montgomery County and I think Inglewood uh, Police Department both have explore programs as well. Um, I, I kind of wish I had participated that as, in that as well, because uh, once I did join the Air Force, I actually became a police officer in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I don't know if I'm just a glutton for punishment with the general public or, or what it is, but uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed both jobs. So, and I'm still doing one of them. So, <laughs> say glutton for punishment, probably, you know, that's probably an appropriate <laughs> title. Uh, say you're married, how long have you been married? Uh, let's see here, 2018, 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, almost four years now. So, <laughs> yeah, it feels like it's about 50, but you know, oh, it is what it is. You're right now. Going out on the airway. Where's the stop button on this thing? <laughs> uh, any little marks or marquettes? Uh, we got three boys, uh, 19, 14, and 10, and uh, they're all my favorite pain in the asses. So. Okay. <laughs> uh, any, any pets or obnoxious neighbors? Uh, we've got uh, three pit bulls, uh, two Jeez. cats, and uh, yeah. And, there, there are other three children that are all idiots too, so <laughs> yeah. and, uh, they, they, they've all got their own personalities. Our, our oldest one is a little bit of a stoner. He just lays around all day. Uh, the second Are you one. About pit bulls? Oh, I was going to say. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> just children. check it. Our, our, our children, our children, the verdict's still out on them. So uh, the 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 second one, she got hit by a car a while ago, so she's got a, a a couple little brain issues, but for the most part, I mean, she's just absolutely adorable. And the third one, she'll bark at the wind when it blows the wrong way, and she's uh, she's a little house guardian. So <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what do you do for fun? Uh, you know, can't say. I, yeah, no. <laughs> it's all classified, sir. Um, well, I work, uh, work full-time uh, at the National Museum of the United States Air Force at wright Pat. Uh, I do uh, physical security and day-to-day -day operations out there. Um, and then this part-time, so I would say that this is what I do for fun. 
Yeah, you know? it doesn't compare to what I get paid for through the government, but uh, this is, like I said earlier, one hell of a ride. So I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Where do you take the family on vacation? <laughs> uh, every July, we'll go out to Myrtle Beach for a week. Mm -hmm. um, this year, uh, the wife can't get as much time off, but uh, we've got, let's see here, a trip to Hawaii in June uh, to go see her brother who just had a baby last month. Uh, me and our youngest will do Myrtle Beach in July, and then August we're going down to Georgia where they do the Masters um, mm -hmm. to go do a family reunion for her. So, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, once yearly we're, we're definitely going to Myrtle Beach every year. So well, good. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you get out. Yeah. I'll work and no play. You know how that something goes. like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad glad you were here in that transition. You, you know, you were able to to, to stop in this evening. Um, yeah, I don't know when your next you know, the, the next Monday shift. That I'm, you I'm actually here. out here Tuesday and Thursday nights. That's typically what I do. Um, well, I meant when we're meeting. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm actually never never really out here Monday nights. Uh, we just happen to be uh, uh, kind of full tomorrow night, and Nate wanted the, uh, the extra experience here with him tonight with mm -hmm. the other two guys we had on. So I told him I'll switch uh, tomorrow night for tonight. And good. Glad well, to, 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 to meet you. It's nice to meet you guys as well. And. Uh, Whatever they say about me, there's a good possibility it's true, but I promise you it won't make the news. So. <laughs> we have a little brief uh, oh, well, token of our appreciation well, for you uh, your work and for you coming to see us this evening, too. Oh, you guys didn't need to do this. Yes, we <laughs> We're happy to. Well, Jennifer, thank you very much, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you guys have a good night today. Hey, you too, Mark. Thank you. Look at him. Glad we got to see him because it didn't sound like in the future. Not been here. Um, where are we? Oh, we're at the cemetery before. Not at the end. Your floor is yours. Since the last meeting, we had one burial, natural burial, and we didn't do whatever. That's all we had. Um, got a hold of graveyard rumors. The prices have gone up. The the real ones. The real ones. Wolf and yeah. his crew, their mm -hmm. prices have gone up to one twenty-five an hour and two fifty a day in expenses. Mm -hmm. So work had to be a, a, a week. Six thousand dollars. It was three. It was four. Four. So it's gone up to around six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Mm -hmm. They're just getting ready to get their feet started up for the mm -hmm. season, and so they're going to let us know. Their schedule and we're not getting the court interested. Who was it you said? Was it Xenia or Bath or somebody was had, had somebody? Xenia had somebody, but and he didn't recommend it. Okay, well, that's, they, that's they what I wanted to know. Yeah, they didn't. They, they weren't happy. Mm -hmm. 100%. So. And you know, that would have been maybe our second choice if Walt well, wouldn't have been happy, but they called and said, Yeah, we did get started. I was afraid that they were done. And these are the folks that. Have been uh, rebuild girls and monuments or glue them, put them together. They're very good. What do you recall? I think it was was it twenty five stones that they did last time? They did they did mainly broken stones, right. not putting back together fallen monuments. I don't remember how many wall put back together. He put there was a few. Usually they did like. They tried to do like eight, they get around 85, I think, because they're at 85? Total, with everything, straighten them up. And, and no, yeah, no way. Yeah, straighten them up. Now, they don't get 85 clean, but Walt well, puts a bunch together. But I didn't tell them what, that counts straighten them up and him put them back together. I think he's probably, last time it was 25 or 30, he's about mm -hmm. It's a pretty tough one to do mm -hmm. for us. And he had new, you know, he had new help when when we help her. So. As much as I like cleaning, I would, you know, get to that point. You know, I would prefer to have the work and I'd rather have you put them together. Put them together. Exactly. Yeah. And they have to clean the parts of it. Sure. Yeah. 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 But to clean the whole stone. Yeah. Know. Yeah. I mean, I love it, but it's more. Beneficial if they just get our stuff from exactly. Yeah. So they'll be called it back. So maybe it's what you call it. Don, do you have any uh, feeling one way or the other whether you support having them be back at this new rate? How much 
money do we have in the reserve? We have. Well, we're going to take some out, but we have roughly 90 plus thousand in the account. Uh, we're going to have to pay for the second column bearing when it comes. We'll have to pay for the paving of the, uh, uh, the roads, the pads, as it were. Uh, was that roughly 40? 14. 14. You have it all, all, all together with. I don't know what Hensley's in was. I, have, I don't know what they're. I, I think that's going to be roughly 40 for the whole project. Plus, is that count include the black top? Yeah, that's everything. Okay. So that's probably that, that's they're, black top. They're in the 28 or 30 or something like that. Yeah. And that, that reminds me, now i got to ask you when we get to that. So this, anyway, this is an annual expense? No. This no. is uh, once every, when was the last time we did it? Three or four years ago? Four years ago. Three, three, four. Well, uh, I was, yeah. It was four years ago. Mm -hmm. I would do it, but I also think that it's worth having a long-term plan. You know, that is, yes, we'll do it every three years. Or we'll, uh, I don't disagree. It just to put things up. When it comes down to it, what have we done in between? Do we still have that backlog? Do we still have a reserve of money mm -hmm. for it? It's like you know, all the other chip sealing and paving and buying equipment. You know, it's, we do it when we. <laughs> We can. Well, uh, I mean, I'm sad at the uh, collection of broken stone in uh, Clifton, uh, and I'm glad that Glen Forest hasn't de hasn't declined that far. I am too, but we just have to keep at it. That's yeah. That's so I, I think that it, it makes sense to do it when we can afford it. And, uh, I defer to you as to whether it fits. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I entertain a motion to have a, a, a week's worth of done a week's worth of work done this year. I so move. Probably in the fall. Don't they like the fall? Or? He likes, yeah, pretty much kind of late in the season. Mm -hmm. They're gonna come call me. Okay. I said, well, let me know when your time schedule and yeah. says you get back to this from there. All right, I'll second. They were planning. Out there yearly, yeah. who wants to do this and that? I said, well, we won't be able to do this. I'll make it over there, I'll call it back. Any further discussion? Here we go, please. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. See, Drew, we can spend some money when we have to. Um, anything else? Um, just trying to get some work done in the natural area as I can. Mm -hmm. The new one. The new. Mm -hmm. We'll make a dent. We made a little bit. Yeah. Keep making dent. Um, we're basically taking this in, in chunks of, of thirds, roughly. The, yeah, we, we've done the first third in the front. He's working on the middle third now. Uh, the second or the third third will be in the future. What we're trying to do is, uh, among other things, including getting it put together, is getting it to the point where the surveyor, who's hopefully going to be here uh, first, middle, or sometime next month, to be here to have the ground in a condition where the surveyor can, can mark the, the, the tree spots. And the, obviously the ground has to be tilled and to flattened and whatever in, in order for them to, to do that. So we're working, the, the, the first third is, is, is in that condition, it's ready to have the mark. One way or the other, we can have the, the first third pinned uh, with the trees. We'd like to have a second, you know. And we're not even talking about the additional grave sites yet because we decided that we won't sell those grave sites until the ones in the current natural burial are substantially you know, been, been, been sold. And right now, I think we've got 40, 45, Grave sites that are being either used or sold in the natural area. I think it's about 30 people. Yeah, but we've sold some. I sold, sold more than that. There's yeah. quite a few. Yeah. They like, only have 70 somewhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so we're, mov we're moving along with that. Uh, kind of a hybrid. Uh, 
Hi, Brett. I want to. I was reviewing Greta's uh, proposal for the black topping of the pads versus what uh, Stephanie is proposing. Greta was talking about putting a three-inch overlay on the on the new new parts, mm -hmm. the ones that would have a full depth and then the base and all the rest of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas it looks like Stephanie's only talking about putting an inch and a half. Inch and a half. Now, of course, we don't have any big semis and things going around there. In, inch and a half of asphalt? Mm -hmm. that, that almost doesn't seem like. I know. Time to go up and then you end up with an inch. Mm -hmm. Just give or take a bit over the end, time to go up there. I mean, couldn't I come along with my hand <laughs> just to the side and peel yeah, up part of it? Probably not. <laughs> that's the goal. That's how strong I am. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but from your experience, does that sound thin? No, Too thin? no. For a, they're going full depth, mm -hmm. and then they're going to roll it, and then they lay four of them and roll it. And when they reclaim it, don't they add their additive to it? Yeah. Yeah. it? So they build a base. Mm -hmm. So you basically put an inch and a half on top, which I think would be good. Okay. All right. I just, you know, I was, but I can see Greg is in that. You know, they just want to build their base and then use more of the blacktop as part of the base, basically. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just be more black mm -hmm. I, I haven't talked with Greg about it. I didn't know. Okay, well, you need to get and that talk set up. With Stephanie, you know, we, yeah. we kind of agree that it's and a half, you know, for the more, we're not running big trucks in there. Yeah. You know, with, with what they're doing, but I haven't talked to Greg at any about it. Well, get with her, I'll please. Get, I'll call Greg. Uh, you know, and let her know that she's not going to do the black part, black top part, but we'd like to have the Full depth, full depth done sometime. Sometime before August. So yeah. They'll start paving us probably in mid August or somewhere. Yeah, but they usually get around to us in November. <laughs> yeah, but right, for many years, it's all weather. And we'll want to block off those paths that they full depth, right? Yeah, before. <clears throat> once they're done, we'll have to do something to keep them off the road and paved. It won't. I don't know where people got them, but you can block them off. Yeah, okay. okay. All right, then let's roll, in, roll into roads. What are we doing? Well, we wanted to start rolling today, but it was a little bit different today. I mean, we need to cut grass. Um, mowing where? Clifton, Brandon's going to start mm -hmm. Clifton Cemetery today. But, uh, that was planned, but the weather changed. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But you're not, I mean, the, I went around yesterday, I mean, our, our firms are nowhere near. Oh, we're not ready. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It won't take long, three weeks. Yeah. Mid, mid May. Mid May. Mm -hmm. I'd like to get all of it. Yeah. Now they take the spreader off the end, I gotta wait for more. <laughs> Maybe well, we need, stop snowing. We need a Memorial Day plan for, for the mowing and Looking nice for the morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll be there. Have you talked to Ryder? I talked to him. He mowed everything. He's going to come back and they mowed everything except some of the old part he didn't know. Yeah. And then we back probably later this week. Uh, he's feeling all right. He's got a good crew, as far as you know. And then Chewy, the same, same Chewy. Mm -hmm. And you said our uh, new utility vehicle. Our new truck is here to release. He told me this today, cold, mm -hmm. uh, second week in May, mm -hmm. and that they would deliver it to KE Rose for us. They will. Okay. Because so, I asked him, should I notify KE Rose? And that's where he's going. He said, no, we do. Does, does Eric Rose need to know that it's coming to? I mean, do they need to order a bed or? Well, they already those are all that. I mean, they are never on board with them. We're just waiting on our truck. I mean, so I don't know how soon. Once they get it, they're going to get it and go. You know, yeah. They can be right away. But yeah. Once they have it, they, they do this thing. Do they know we're a go with them? Mm -hmm. yeah. We'll put our spreader on the old, the old spreader we have. So I'll have to take that over. They're on board. 
And now, do we, uh, it's been so long, do we on this gov deals or whatever the thing is, are we working through engineer's office to put the old truck on that? I that get rid of the old truck? Huh? To sell the old yeah. truck? I don't know how we're going to do it. The last one went through Hanson Dodge auction. But I think Hanson was good. So I don't know whether we're going to just sell it outright or what. Uh, but a lot of people, as I have I heard, that are using the same place that the, that the engineer's office sells their used equipment. And they get, according to Stephanie or, or Bob Guy or whoever I was talking to, they get, they get good money huh? yeah. for, their, for their pieces. So we put it on there. I didn't know how we were going to get rid of it. Yeah. I mean, we had a couple offers on it. Mm -hmm. so I don't know whether that compares to what we would get through. Well, I, would, I would think there's probably a a good database of reference as to how much stuff is going for. So um, I don't know whether it's I don't know whether it's bid or you just put a price on it. We just have to it's fine, yeah. the most that we use it until oh yeah next fall or sure. you know, we'll get the truck I hope so. I Hopefully think Hopefully before winter next year but you know I say this a million times but uh, I'd much rather drive that truck than the, the new one. Than the new one. I fight that new one. I mean, yeah. All it does is wander all it's over the road. That since day one. I know it has, but it's like you know, I want to stop and put the tie rod end back up. But the old one, the old one, two down the road. Yeah. Huh? Take your hands off. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that means all. No, the new one's all. I hope the new one's not the same. I hope it's not either. Well, you know, I'll, we'll check into work what to do with it. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right, we'll keep it in mind. Obviously, we're sure. not there yet, but you know, it's like it's like our township levy, which we have to put on for operating expenses. Mm -hmm. It'll be here before we know it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be here before we know it. And it's, it's getting up there. Anything else, Dan? Uh, yes, sir. Don, anything for Dan? Nope. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll move on to uh, this class office report for the evening. Ms. Silver. Just got a, a quickie uh, uh, resolution number 2022-17, amending a, a couple of permanent appropriations. Nor is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now therefore the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. Increased training and fire fund by $2,000, because we run through that money already, and um, EMS billing. Uh, increased social security by $800. That's payroll. Uh, Miami Township Trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately, please. I would entertain a motion for resolution 2217. I move adoption of this. Uh, we have a motion. I will second that. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. Don't really have anything else? to report at this time. Mm -hmm. No? I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still cutting checks, so oh, okay. depositing money. I, it comes in, it goes out. That's all I got. Well, that's all we can ask for, Margaret. Uh, that's all. <laughs> uh, anything else for the sponsor? Nope. Dan? No. <laughs> See? Maryland's the <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'd ask Drew, but he probably wanted to cut a check or something. Cut a check or something. Okay, moving to the zoning inspector's report. We have no zoning inspector's report uh, because he's, well, because this is not his uh, even for the report. Uh, however, I do have a couple of things to mention about an um, upcoming BCA hearing that's scheduled for the 28th. Uh, I believe it has been. Adequately um, noticed in the in the newspaper, so that makes it official. Uh, I contracted with a uh, court reporter today to be there to take minutes or take transcripts or whatever that's called for it. Um, I put a call in, and, and I'm not sure there's a miscommunication or something to our quote. Um, new attorneys in Columbus to 
ask that they might some, send somebody down uh, kind of as our ears and eyes to see what uh, uh, to see what goes on see if there's any procedural things that they're you know they're concerned about perhaps after you know afterwards um, so I will follow up on that and, and let you so know. will they charge for just the time they're at the meeting or travel travel to yeah travel. Mm -hmm. um, four hours yeah well no one down one back an hour yeah and, and then the time of the meeting right yeah and how many attorneys oh uh, we would only ask for one <laughs> we're big but we're not that big <laughs> As you all know, we can't afford. Oh no, we can't afford. They are very uh, reasonable, and that's uh, that's all I have for that. So next is standing committee reports. Uh, MVRPC. I did not attend the last meeting. Original planning. I did attend that meeting, and we reviewed three zoning text amendments for Beaver Creek Township. They were really coming through their, their zoning. Uh, and one zoning, one zoning text amendment for Miami Township, a PUD plan, which has been around forever it seems, but it will be coming back uh, recommended to adopt uh, to the zoning commission and then obviously they will schedule their hearing and uh, depending upon what the result of that is, they will either recommend or uh, approval of it, or, or table it, or just can it, or something. Um, Clifton Union. We did have a meeting, and I, will you help me out, Mar uh, Margaret? Uh, what did we decide about how much we were going to... Uh, All of it. We're putting in abeyance, we're drawing down our reserve, so we're not charging either township, town, for, township for contributions towards our um, the, an, the annual, um, bear, you know, I put the, the um, figures in here. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah, right. So yeah. generally in the past it would be split amongst the two townships. Mm -hmm. And then last year um, the cemetery board chose to only to um, only charge the townships each a quarter of what the annual costs mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. And this year they decided that they didn't need any money from either township to contribute to the cost. So, so Clifton Union Cemetery paid Miami Township for the full 16000 well, we, we have... First time in a long time. Mm -hmm. No, we, we have, have a, a pretty good reserve and it's unclear when, but a house has been willed to us. Uh, so, although it's not money in hand, uh, when that house, when the current occupant uh, no longer is in the house, mm -hmm. which could be years, mm -hmm. uh, the sale of the house will. This is a house on 72 mm -hmm. towards Springfield. Um, so I know, I, I, I'm almost sure we discussed this before, but maybe not recently, but keep in mind, at, I don't know if you read the thing, but at that time, the house is sold, the proceeds are invested, and the cemetery can use the, pro, can, can use the proceeds of the investment. So. House sells for a hundred grand. It's not a very big house. Uh, they put it in at three percent or something like mm -hmm. that. You know, they might get three hundred dollars a year for or, or three three thousand or three thousand dollars. Yes. One. Uh, I had I had not realized that one percent is not three thousand or two percent is not three thousand. I thought you said three, but anyway. Okay. Uh, but it's, so it's not a substantial. I didn't realize that it had to be used as an endowment. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't have to be used as an endowment. It can be used for operations. 
but you can't use the full amount of the sale. Just the interest. Just that's the interest. Which means the full amount of the sale is an endowment. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that. Uh -huh. In any case, we do have a, what's, what's the scale of the reserve? My memory is something like 60,000. I thought it was 40. We have 48,000 maybe? No, we have 54. I know, yeah. Remember, it, and then it paid Something like that. So, yeah, it's probably 38 after you take it. Right, yeah, yeah, so 54, yeah. And, you know, Which it goes to say, you know, in, um, if I may add uh, that um, Mr. Waddle, who was the chair of the board, kept asking Dan, well, what, or asking, how, why do we have so much money? And it's well because some folks are working pretty hard. Selling graves and burying people, and it's just, you know, so that's how we got. That's it. There's no other income that's source. Right. That's how you get it. That's it. That's how you get it. So that's what's happened. So, uh, but perhaps most important in the meeting is that uh, and I'm blanking on her name Lisa. has resigned. Lisa. Oh, Lisa, Lisa Kimball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, her? Oh. we're looking. F uh, yeah. uh, I met with. Mayor uh, Beery, uh, well, asking for suggestions and uh, sort of putting the word out in Clifton that we're, you know, who would be interested in being on the board. Okay. Not just through the mayor. Uh, Development Corporation will be meeting here on May 3rd, uh, Corey Van Ostel, our, one of our two members of the board, is now the, the president. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, we're sort of at a lull in activity. Did you meet in April? Yes. Yep. What, what went on? Not much. We're at a lull. <laughs> <laughs> See, <laughs> seems like that lull has been around for a while. Well, and we're talking about uh, not meeting every month. Um, maybe the phone calls could be lull. <laughs> Isn't there a mute on that thing? It's a new phone. It's a new phone. I'm still trying to figure out. Okay. Uh, let's say the Cornell Mill, we're still waiting through April till the May 1st potential time that we'll sign it over, uh, the operation of it, I should say, to the, to the Glen. Uh, there's, been a few, uh, there's been a few requests from the manager for things that their property management team, as it were, I don't know who, how big a team it is, has requested that we look into prior to the transfer, I found those to be reasonable requests. One is to have a, um, and this was just a suggestion, to have a termite inspection uh, prior to them taking over and uh, for us to consider a, because of where it is, and I'm surprised it, it hasn't been, it was not infested with termites uh, when we, tore it down, as it were. There was very little, there was some bug damage, but it wasn't termite damage. But for it being in a kind of a floodplain area, and in a woods, and being a totally wood structure that, you know, the little critters haven't, haven't started chopping on it, but. Well, there may have been, uh, may have been treated decades ago by uh, chemicals that are illegal. <laughs> that would be some strong. I mean, my, now torn down house on High Street had no no sign of termites in the old wood beams. Yep. And I'm, and I'm, I'm worried that it was contaminated. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Glad to hear <laughs> So the decision is to um, enter into a contract with Terminix to have a. Um, an abatement plan put in. 
they also wondered what the status of the fire extinguishers were in the building and uh, found out that the fire extinguishers were serviced on a uh, personal basis by the former manager and that won't be available to us anymore. So I've uh, asked our fire extinguishers fixer-upper Corson mm -hmm. to uh, quote a price, to, to check the mill out, quote a price, how many uh, extinguishers it might need, and what it would cost on a you know, yearly basis. I mean, I, I know what it costs for these and for other buildings, but to see if there's any difference in that. Um, did they want anything else? I don't think so, but I, I am going to have the building power washed and the deck power washed in order to make it a little, it's, it's looking a bit weathered, weathered yeah, and give it a little nicer appearance before we get to turn it over to them. I had considered, go ahead. Uh, you might check, I mean, I, I remember one time power washing uh, an older building before painting and it ended up gouging the wood. Mm -hmm. It's not an older building, really. In, re in reality, it's not an older building because the, the, all the siding, all the decking, it, it, it's all new wood, new to the... But you, I mean, you might still do a little test on the... Yeah, well, okay. I mean, this is a professional company. I'm, I'm assuming they would go through and... Guys, but you know... They ought to know. You know what you say about assuming things. I, I understand. So I will, uh, I will, I will mention that to them. Uh, your concern. Um, I had considered, because there are parts of it that are even a little more weathered, I had considered having it painted this year to freshen it up and then kind of changed my mind thinking, well, let's, let's give it a year and see how the relationship goes with the Glen, see if the, if the we're calling it rent now as opposed mm -hmm. to maintenance fee, uh, see how the rent payments, how well they're coming in, that sort of stuff. So before we commit to, to painting it. So, and then of course, after May 1st, all the decisions of what to do with it, what money to spend on it, it will be a board decision, not, not mine, because, mm -hmm. because the Granoma Foundation will be dissolved, along with the Breakfast Foundation will be dissolved. And the assets will come to us, Margaret, and oh. we will need to establish a, a new capital fund, a Grinnell, a Grinnell Mill. Mill capital fund, oh, okay. which will hold the, the roughly $45,000 in assets that will be transferred into it oh. uh, for the exclusive use of its, what we need to do. And so the money that is collected when they rent, mm -hmm. We'll go right into that fund. It'll come to me as well. Correct. Come to my fund. It will. It'll go right into the fund. You want it in tens or fives? Hundreds are good. Hundreds? Yeah. Okay. You give us a little high when you deposit it. It's better. So that's, a, that's the deal with Mill. Um, the Climate Action and Sustainability Group report will have to wait until next month. Any new business this evening? Not, not other than my phone. <laughs> Any old business? Hearing none. No business, no business, no old business. I would entertain a motion to uh, adjourn. I move we adjourn. There is a motion. I will second that motion and declare by acclamation we are adjourned for the evening. Thank you all for joining us. Thank Please you. Stop back next month. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> nice to